Oh, well, welcome to our webinar, Best Practices for Downtowns in Crisis. Um, Heritage Ohio is delighted to put this webinar on to reach as many people, help as many people as you can. These webinars are made possible by the generosity of our members. If you like what you, we do, we hope that you'll support Heritage Ohio. Uh, today we have Francis Joe Hamilton, the Director of Revitalization for Heritage Ohio. She is joined by Lorna Swisher, the Executive Director of Main Street Piqua, and Christy Thomas, who is the Executive Director of Marietta Main Street. So we are going to get started with the webinar. There, take it away, Joe. Thanks, Joyce. So uh, we all had a call with uh, Main Street managers across the state yesterday, and uh, from that call decided to try to put some of the information that we gathered into the format of a webinar so that we can spread that information a little wider without having 100 people on a call. It was hard enough to have 20 people on a call. Um, so bear with us as we go through this webinar. Uh, we've kind of put together um, in the last 24 hours and with a couple of speakers who are, of course, all social distancing and working remotely. So we are in opposite corners of the state right now trying to uh, bring you as much information as we can. Uh, Main Street America shared this slide earlier this week amidst this uncertainty. However, one thing is clear, Main Street organizations have an essential role to play in supporting businesses during this difficult period and our Main Street leaders will be even more important when fears about the virus subside and we are actively supporting businesses and communities in the recovery process. So um, a big part of our focus yesterday was, you know, what can we do right now to be helpful to our downtown businesses and to make sure that our organizations are surviving, as well as what can we do uh, to start preparing for what those next steps look like. Joyce, you can advance the slide. So first and foremost, I feel like we should do our due diligence and make sure that we are emphasizing, um, you know, listening to our CDC and the recommendations at this point that we should all be staying away from each other, washing our hands, um, making sure that we're doing everything we can to uh, provide the safety that is necessary for the people that are around us. So um, in the midst of everything that we do as an organization, the, the Main Street concept really requires a lot of personal contact. And so how do we continue to do what we, what we do best um, but also follow these recommendations. So um, by, by no means do we want you to put yourself or your volunteers or your business owners at risk and uh, just want to make sure that everybody has the link to um, the CDC's website uh, for the up-to-date current information on how to handle coronavirus in your community. Joyce, you can advance the slide. So yesterday we talked a lot about ideas to support local. Um, one of the things that I wanted to bring forward, and then I'm going to let Christy talk just a little bit about her support local bingo card, and uh, and then she can talk through uh, the next couple of slides as well. Um, but one of the things that we heard was that maybe communities would like to have a platform from which they can donate to their local businesses. Um, you know, I'm thinking about a couple of businesses that especially hold um, place in my heart, and I would certainly be willing to make a contribution to those businesses. So maybe even just bringing to the surface uh, at the business level that the community wants a way to respond. So um, maybe encouraging your local businesses to set up GoFundMe accounts so that those of us who would like to make contributions, um, just sort of carte blanche are able to do that. Um, and maybe in lieu of buying gift cards or in addition to buying gift cards. Um, but I'm gonna let Christy talk a little bit about the support local bingo card that we see right now. Thank you so much, Joe. Um, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, the Support Local Bingo Card was actually published by our local community magazine called Clutch MOV. So you can see their logo there in the center block. 
uh, the owner and founder of that is the past president of our board of directors. Um, and the magazine really just tries in a million different ways to just uplift all things local and celebrate our communities here in our region. So um, they actually drew inspiration from something that was seen from Charleston, West Virginia, um, as a fun way to, while people are socially distant, still um, show their support for local businesses. So you can see on the different blocks there, the different opportunities um, that there are to continue to support local, even though that our fiscal bodies might be, you know, stowed away in our homes for the time being. Um, and then what Clutch MOV is doing is actually entering folks into a raffle to win gift cards um, and other items for, for getting bingo. Um, and so the, the card itself, and if you wanna go forward to the next slide, um, is really just a way for, to reiterate the variety of ways that folks can support local businesses and organizations at this time, which I really think is a, a key mission of Main Street organizations is that promotional support for our commercial district. So in times that are tough, kind of being that light and still showing all the abundance of opportunities there are to continue to lean into our communities. So. Um, this is a graphic that we had made, and it kind of made its way around the Ohio Main Street program, um, and I've seen it in other states as well, which is kind of awesome that it made it that far. Um, but the, the variety of ways that people can support locals. So I think the charge for Main Street is to continue to put out those messages. So you can buy gift cards. You can shop online, shop over the phone, leave a review and promote social media. Um, so that when our small businesses are putting something out into the digital world, that there's actually folks there that can latch onto it and can engage with that content, subscribing to their online newsletters, um, recognizing right now that our, you know, our small businesses, you know, in our, at least Marietta's downtown, I think in some ways, this whole COVID-19 situation has forced our hands um, in ways that we weren't necessarily prepared to adapt to 2020, for example. Um, so for some of these things like shopping online, we have business owners that are scrambling to make sure they're, to get a website launched um, and to get their inventory on their website, to even buy branded gift cards so that they can start selling them to the public. Uh, so these are ways that Main Streets can really offer support in this learning curve that some of our small business owners are going through right now just to make sure that they're doing their part in generating revenue, not only for themselves, but also for their employees. Um, we can go to the next slide. Um, something else that we as an organization are doing, um, we distributed an online survey through Google Forms, um, <laughs> you know, aptly named the COVID-19 survey for downtown businesses. Uh, but we really want to, this is intended to capture data of our district see what the needs are of our downtown businesses, what are the fears, um, so that we can be advocates for state and federal uh, stimulus packages with our, uh, our local regional council, Buckeye Hills Regional Council. They're advocates to legislators for what the needs are right now for when we're finally in the recovery stage, whenever that might be. So questions like, have you been negatively impacted by this public health emergency? How many employees do you have on staff? How many employees are at risk of unemployment and layoffs and reduced hours? Um, there's a variety of other questions that can make that link live um, for folks that want to access the types of questions we're asking. Um, percentage of revenues that they're estimated to decline in business. And of course, something that's really near and dear to our hearts, if this level of business disruption continues at the current rate, What's the likelihood, what's the threat of closure for our businesses downtown? Is it a month away? Is it two months away? Is it six months away? Or is it not a concern at all? Um, so we can really start to tailor some of the ways we are supporting our businesses um, right now and then in the future. We can go to the next slide. Um, so that's an example, really simple, nothing graphically amazing, um, just through Google Forms. We put it out on our social media. We send it in an email to our downtown business owners. And we also have a private downtown business owner Facebook group. So we posted it there as well, trying to capture as much data as possible um, so that we can share it with our local partners in economic development um, and our legislators. Uh, we can go to the next slide. 
Something we also um, have done um, is we forged a really great partnership with our local CVB and our local Chamber of Commerce um, to start pooling resources and collectively as a whole showing our support for the community. Um, so myself and the leaders of the CVB and the Chamber of Commerce all got on the same page at the same time. Like membership doesn't matter right now. Partnership doesn't matter right now. We're member based or partner based. Um, we're donor based. We want to show gratitude in a variety of ways, but this time for us, that doesn't matter if you're a partner or not, if you're a member or not, we're committed to serving you and supporting you through this time. So we pulled resources and created a local resource guide that segments things federally at the federal level, the state level, and at the local level. Um, one thing that's really awesome, our local community foundation set up a COVID-19 community impact fund. Because um, as Joe had mentioned earlier, there's a lot of folks that want to show their support for small businesses or um, you know, workers that now are without jobs with the restaurant closures, um, things of that nature. How can they show their support? How can they give back to the organizations that are feeding our students that they're, now that they're out of school and providing breakfasts and lunches? Um, so they created this one fund that we've been directing folks to when we get questions, how can I help? Um, we have an answer. Here's the best way for you to help right now is to direct your resources in this way. Um, so that's part of this local resource guide and we're sharing that through all of our networks. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, obviously in the state of Ohio, and I think there's folks on this call outside of the state of Ohio, but I think a lot of uh, folks are following suit in other states. Um, are ordering restaurants to close. So it's forcing a lot of our restaurant owners hands to get creative with how they distribute their food. Um, so in a similar vein to the support local graphic, here's all those creative ways you could support your local businesses. Here are specific ways you can continue to eat local even when bars and restaurants are shut down. Um, ordering delivery, curbside pickup, pickup at the door and carry out to go options. Um, acknowledging that another, um, in the Main Street world, we have economic vitality committees, right, or business enhancement committees. This is really an opportunity for those committees to shine so, so brightly um, because what's happening is restaurants that don't have delivery as part of their bread and butter aren't used to, um, you know, a tremendous amount of carry out are now having to figure out what's the insurance and the licensing um, that I need to be able to provide delivery services. You know, workers' wages are different from being a waitress or a server to being a delivery, um, you know, part of the delivery personnel. And there's different liabilities that are at stake in those circumstances. So sharing those in resources with restaurant owners so that they can adapt quickly um, would be, you know, part of our due diligence and showing our support. Um, now, I will say that we're putting this out or pushing out as much as we can, acknowledging that some of our restaurants ultimately are deciding to just close until further notice. Um, that's really, you know, that hits our district. That's, that's hard to hear. It's heartbreaking that people are just closing our doors, uh, retailers and restaurants alike. But through continuing to put out this messaging that there's hope and there's positivity and there's optimism in this and that our community matters. Um, very much and just use this as a time to like build that narrative even further of the impact of small businesses in our towns, um, the economic value and the tourism value and the quality of life value that they provide. Even if they're closed, the community needs to see them open again for an abundance of reasons. So how can we continue to put out messaging that reinforces, you know, this very real narrative? Uh, we can go to the next slide. So I, I had mentioned a partnership with the CVB and the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce put together a digital guide um, that was just a listing of all of our restaurants. It's kind of like a, a, a well-formatted spreadsheet. Um, and then folks can go down by community in our region and see who does carry out, who does delivery, who does DoorDash or Grubhub, who does curbside pickup, um, who's just closed. Um, phone numbers, Facebook links, website links, um, just to make it easy since there's so much information being spread on social media right now and businesses are doing their own due diligence to just put as much out digitally that for the consumer, it's hard to keep track 
of who's doing what, when, and how. Um, Christy, we don't hear you. If you're still there, Christy, you've gone away. Hey, sorry. I just my call just dropped. That was weird. Am I here? Yes, you're back here. Now. Okay, sorry. My call dropped. I just called back in. Sorry, everyone. Um, so yes, take out Blitz. So we're promoting that. It's gotten a lot of good traffic. We just launched that this morning, actually. Um, so it's pretty cool. Next slide. Um, again, because we're partnering with the CBB, we want to underscore the need for tourism. Um, in Marietta, we have a historic downtown, and it's a key driver of our tourism economy. Um, folks want to come and visit. We're on the confluence of two rivers. We have an abundance of museums and entertainment venues. Um, a lot of those workers and, you know, attractions are struggling right now, like many of us are. And so just more content, this messaging, save tourism, don't cancel your trip, just reschedule it. Um, when are we going to reschedule? You know, that's a great question. Um, but just keep us top of mind. Keep us on your calendars. Don't lose track of the fact that you wanted to come and visit with us. Um, there's a lot of advocacy going right around right now with the Ohio Travel Association. They have a, I think they have a petition that folks can sign that's circulating right now to show support for tourism workers. Um, so just making sure that, especially if you're downtown, is a driver of the tourism economy that we're also paying attention to the, the tourism needs. Um, next slide. So here's a variety of links. You can go to our website. It's MaryToMainStreet.org or to our Facebook page or Instagram. I try and post our content across the board in a variety of ways um, just to see kind of how we're making it easy for folks to find these resources. Um, so something as simple like our local resource guide, we made a bright yellow announcement bar at the top of our page. So when folks come to visit our website, it's really obvious to click right here because, um, again, there's a lot of information that, that people are trying to convey. So just creating that one-stop shop, that easy-to-go-to resource where folks can just access the information they need, I think is, for us, how we've been um, responding, um, acknowledging that tension. and I. I mentioned this yesterday on our conference call uh, with the other Ohio Main Street directors of, we want to support local businesses, but we also want folks to stay home. So in some ways, these are combating uh, values that we have right now. Um, and so I think as Main Streets, really where we can shine the brightest is focusing our efforts on the recovery phase. Um, what are we going to do to offer financial relief, to get folks downtown and in the stores again on the other side of COVID-19 um, and really injecting our energies and our thoughts and our work plans <laughs> into that phase of this public health emergency. Thanks so much, Christy. Next. I appreciate that. <laughs> Joyce, you can go to the next slide for me. All right, so um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, I've had sev several phone calls with communities talking about how we can um, continue to foster relationships within our organizations. And, you know, we, we all have fundraisers coming up and we have planting parties to do our beautification efforts in our downtowns. And um, there are a lot of things that are going to be to have to be put off for a while or maybe canceled altogether. Um, I, I did see a post online. I was unable to find it this morning, but um, just asking your sponsors and your donors, is it okay if we keep your ticket price um, as a contribution to the organization in this hard time right now? Um, sometimes just communicating with those folks is, is a great way to uh, continue to engage and make sure that we're not losing revenue. So um, a few things that I pulled this morning. Number one, set the examples. Just like Christy said, we, you know, we've all been told to stay away from each other and to stay home and to uh, do our own due diligence as far as not 
continuing the, the spread of this virus. So um, making sure that we're setting the example organizationally and not expecting our volunteers and our, our organizations to uh, step outside that box. Um, so set the example, make sure that we're, we're following the protocol as it's been set forth. Um, fostering unity by engaging um, your, your people on a virtual platform. Why not host um, those same parties virtually online. We have a lot of capabilities in spite of um, my hardship being out in the country and not having the greatest internet, but um, most of the time we have a lot of uh, opportunities to, to be face to face with each other even if we're not side by side. Um, realize that you can still support your sponsors. Um, if you took in sponsorship dollars, those sponsorship dollars were meant to pay for, ad, pay for advertisement. So you can still give that same level of advertisement to your sponsors um, in spite of the pending potential cancellation of events and activities. Uh, one of the least of the things that we give to our sponsors is maybe a booth at an event. Um, as far as a sponsor is concerned, that's probably um, something at the bottom of their wish list. They would much rather have that online advertisement happening. So realizing that you can still support them by continuing to give them the advertisements they've paid for. Um, once again, asking your donors or ticket holders if they will allow ticket prices to be considered a donation. Um, consider online platforms instead of canceling. Even when it comes to meetings, um, if we're trying to continue to engage our volunteers and making sure that work plans are still being carried out, what are the things that we can be working on in a, in a remote sort of platform? Um, and communicate with everyone. Make sure that you're sending, send the email, make the phone call. We're all kind of stuck inside right now. So um, taking the time to make those phone calls and uh, have open lines of communication and connection with your, with your sponsors, with your ticket holders, and with your volunteers. Um, Joyce, you can go to the next slide. So Lorna, I'd like for you to give us a little talk about um, your your 30 day concept that we talked about on the phone yesterday. So I'm gonna turn it over to Lorna and pick Uh Thank you very much. Um, this was uh, something that I heard on a webinar um, the other day. I, I think that um, right now um, we are all feeling just an, a tremendous amount of pressure um, to do everything for everybody all the time. And the simple truth is that we don't know when this, um, when when normal, whatever that is, comes back into reality. So, um, if you are generally going to be doing something, um, and you're going to be working on it in the last part of March, according to your work plan or um, what your committee has discussed, think about the things that that you know you cannot do and put them out 30 days. Um, just, just it, in our case here in, in Piqua, we're talking about beautification and we just know that this is not something that we can deal with right now. Um, so we're just marking it on the calendar 30 days from now. That's when we're going to start dealing with it. And I think that as you are able to, um, take things off your calendar or out of your brain for the time being, it frees up some of those creative resources that you have. So, so go through your, your work plans and go through what you need, know needs to be done and just push it off for those things that you know that you can push off. Um, the reality is, is that we, as we move forward, what normal downtown looks like in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, we don't know what that is. Um, we need to be taking care of ourselves and our volunteers um, as much as we all love our downtown businesses and we want them to succeed. If we get sick, they're not taking care of us, our families are. Um, and if we're out in the community, um, we're bringing all of that back to our own homes. So just be very, very careful as you're out there uh, take very good care of yourselves. And the reality is that our new normal, whenever that comes, 
we as uh, community development people, lovers of all things local, um, that's when the real work is going to start for us um, when things get back to quote unquote normal. Thanks, Lorna. Thanks so much. Um, and, and also understanding that right now, depending upon where your volunteers are in their own personal lives, with their own jobs, with having uh, small children at home, with having college children at home, um, you know, they, they probably will be a little more absent than, than they would be otherwise. And that volunteerism might fall way to the bottom of their list. So, um, so giving grace when it's needed um, and making sure that we're focused on those volunteers putting their families first too. Joyce, you can move uh, to the next slide. I, uh, Joe, I, I also want to just say one more thing about that. Um, I think that one of the, as I've talked to a couple of uh, folks who are, are taking care of their communities, they have been a little bit upset by the fact that their boards appear to have disappeared on them. Um, every single person is dealing with this chaos in their own special way. Um, and although I am absolutely sure they love your downtown program and your Main Street program, um, it is very possible that they have just too much in their bandwidth to deal with and just understand this is not normal. Absolutely, absolutely. Well said, Lorna. So one of the things we talked about yesterday too is uh, the media and um, perpetuating those empty, vacant uh, photos of our downtown being um, basically full of, of no people when normally there would be people on the sidewalks. One of the things that you can do from afar is to put together some press releases, uh, go out and get some photos. You can stay far enough away from everyone to, to get some nice photos and sort of capture maybe those moments in your, in your downtown community that no one else is seeing. So um, I, I say this with, with everything that we do, uh, make sure that you're sending press releases out, send them far and wide. You never know who's gonna pick up that piece. The media are always looking for something pre-made for them that they didn't have to write themselves send a print ready uh, photo as well. Um, they're more likely to print something if they have a photo to go along with it. So make sure that you are highlighting the great things that are happening in your community. Joyce, if you can go to the next slide. For instance, a lot of our businesses, um, this is a, a photo from one of the businesses in downtown Delaware that's doing live stream on their uh, yoga. So your local yoga studios and fitness studios, everyone's going to this live stream model to continue uh, exercise classes. How are we moving? How are we taking care of our bodies in this time? And so um, sharing those things even uh, in, the, in the form of a press release is a great way to do that. Joyce, you can go to the next slide. If your downtown is making concessions for things like curbside food pickup, um, this is another photo from one of our, one of our communities where the, the downtown parking situation has been changed. A lot of our Main Street managers uh, very early on in this were able to mitigate any parking issues with people that might be parked there a much longer period of time because they're working from home right now to folks needing just that uh, five minute or less curbside pickup parking situation. Um, so making sure that we're, we're sharing these types of uh, kindness photos in our downtown. Joyce, you can go to the next slide. Um, and then uh, just going along also with all the things that, um, that Marietta has put together, a lot of our communities are putting together the list of businesses where you can get carry out options. Doing these things online and in an electronic format means that we can change them daily um, as things might change. Businesses that maybe were open last week might have decided to shut this week. So keeping these things up to date um, and then adding in uh, one of the things that I feel like this particular piece might be missing is uh, phone call, phone numbers next to each of these businesses so that I have those readily accessible for me so that I can make the phone call to get a carry out order from that particular restaurant. Joyce, you can go to the next slide. 
And this is one of my faves. I, I'm hoping that our managers maybe will capture more acts like this. Uh, this came from Mary Lou in Vermilion. Uh, apparently somebody in her community really needed the calm of their candle uh, that they buy from their local candle shop in the downtown. And this business owner um, was happy to oblige and open up their back door and stand far enough away, but hand them a bag of candles. And so, um, you know, capturing these kinds of things and sending that into the media and sort of trying to dictate uh, the story that they're telling about our downtown right now. Um, we, we might be empty, everybody might be home, um, but people are still there taking care of each other. Joyce, you can go to the next slide. So Frank sent me a great email yesterday, and one of the things that we often uh, shy away from um, is making a phone call to your elected officials. Right now, there are some things uh, at play, and we're, we're trying to make sure to support our local businesses. Um, this is all the information on calling your elected um, officials, the Senate Small Business Committee, um, is looking at a $3 billion relief package to aid small businesses. Um, and we're looking for those loans to be forgiven at the end of the period. So one of my big concerns about uh, offering loans to small local businesses is that a lot of them are already under a great deal of overhead as it stands and maybe will be struggling over these next months and probably in the, into the next year or two because of this to make those overhead payments. And so Offering loans uh, might be a, an immediate band-aid, but uh, those long-term payments are just exacerbating the problem of uh, businesses trying to crawl out from under overhead of even building a business in the first place. So um, give your local officials a call. All the information is here. We'll make sure that this uh, webinar is readily available to you, but um, this is one thing that Main Street managers, your boards, and your board presidents especially can do. They can sit at home today and make a phone call to their elected officials and uh, voice that we, you know, we want bailouts at the, at the small business level as well. This is really important um, going forward that we, we don't lose those mom and pop businesses in our downtown communities. Joyce, you can go to the next slide. There's a little more information there. So this, this gives you all the particulars. I'm not going to read all of this uh, verbatim to you, but I wanted to make sure to include it in the webinar so that everybody has the language to use. Um, I know it's uh, sometimes a little daunting to make a phone call to the state house, but uh, don't be shy about doing that. Um, there are people just the same as we are, and um, you know, what, one of the things that, that we can do to make the biggest impact right now is to let our local officials, um, our elected officials know how they can be helpful to, to our downtown communities. Joyce, you can go to the next slide. So also uh, back into the vein of where we kind of are right now, there are certain things you can control and certain things you cannot control. So focusing on what we can do right now, give those, give help to those who want and need it. Um, I know I have a lot of merchant or a lot of downtown managers right now that are very concerned about the businesses that have decided to close during this time. And while that feels really scary for all of us, there's, you know, those are all individual choices. And um, so we, we want to make sure that we're taking a regular inventory of those businesses that are still open and then trying to figure out how to, how to support them. Um, and most of all, to be there after the dust settles. Uh, how can we reinvigorate everything um, once, we, once we can all get back to a new normal in our downtown? Joyce, you can go to the next slide. So planning the rally party after the crisis. Uh, what can we do to engage the community? What can we do to engage our businesses? And how do we call together our volunteer base? Um, I'm not sure I have all the answers for those things. I'd be happy to have my other two speakers chime in if you have additional thoughts on um, you know, what you might be planning at the, at the end or the beginning, <laughs> I should say, after this. Sure. Over. 
Um, so some things that in partnership with our local CVB and chamber that we're looking at um, is one, like a summertime small business Saturday week, like a week long, huge bash. I know when um, this passes us, we're going to do a big downtown ribbon cutting to celebrate being open for business once again. Um, and just pulling out all the stops to kind of similar to Small Business Saturday, but fanning it out for a full week. And so handing out those canvas tote bags, getting all that promotion and me media support behind our small business community downtown to encourage that like foot traffic in abundance. Um, I've always wanted to have a downtown block party. I know that's something um, Jeff used to talk about a lot is bring back the Sunday uh, block parties. And so we're definitely um, looking to do something like that to just not only for our community to come out, but more, it's not really a small business support focus event. It's more of a community celebration for the small business owners and the employees together with our neighbors and our friends to just come together and be like, Whew, we did this. We've got each other's back. We're strong. Um, just focus on those relationships. And then that financial relief piece that I mentioned that we're targeting um, through that uh, downtown business survey is looking at um, what opportunities are there to provide financial relief to our downtown businesses? What are the needs, um, technical support, training and workforce development um, needs that we can identify now um, so we can prepare the way um, for folks when this is, you know, when there's happier days ahead and we can walk down our sunshining uh, downtown sidewalks. Um, what will that look like? How will we equip our businesses, uh, make sure they have everything that they need? So that's, those are the things that we're thinking about right now, um, bare minimum, but I'm sure there's going to be a lot more to come on that front from our end. So, Lorna, do you have anything to add? Well, I just think that um, in my heart, I believe that there's going to be a pent up demand for people to just get out. And um, our our jobs as downtown development is community development and and fostering connections between people and their community and the place that they love. Um, so I think that uh, going back to my comment earlier, take care of yourself now because at the end of this, it's going to be 100%, 100 miles an hour to do whatever you can um, to get people looking uh, at their communities. And I do believe that people will look differently at their communities at the end of this experience than they do now. So just know the hard work is still ahead of us. Well said. Thanks. Thanks so much, Lorna. Um, and one one little personal note um, for those of you who have Main Street organizations, chambers, you know that that sort of uh, one person show in your downtown or in your community that is doing this community development. One of the things that I heard so strongly on our call yesterday is how overwhelmed our Main Street managers and executive directors are right now. Not only are they um, abundantly concerned for their downtown business owners and their downtown building owners and their their community economy right now and, and how everyone is taking care of themselves, but they're also keenly aware of the threat and the, the risk that all of our organizations are in right now as well and the impact that that's going to have um, just organizationally speaking. Um, so on top of uh, you know, whatever this uh, crisis means for them on a personal level, on a professional level, they're carrying a really big load right now. So if you have people like that in your community, um, you can go to the Heritage Ohio website and you can see all of the Ohio Main Street programs if you click the little plus button next to the revitalize, uh, revitalization um, area on the left-hand side then there's a list of our communities there. And I would just encourage anyone who um, has a heart to maybe reach out to those Main Street managers, give them a little pat on the back and a, um, a little bit of reassurance as, as we move through this. Um, we also have a lot of high turnover in these particular jobs. And I've got several new managers that are, you know, brand new in the job and then also trying to navigate this um, completely 
unexpected turn of events. So uh, reach out to those folks and make sure that you're supporting them. Um, so the, the next slide, Joyce, is just my contact information. If you'll go to that, and then um, so that'll be that'll be in in the the webinar. And and anyone who would like to reach out to me directly, if you have questions, comments, concerns, and then Joyce, you can go to the next slide. When all else fails, Netflix is the answer. Yesterday, one of the one of the big takeaways that I got is that sometimes we all just need the permission to say that today I'm just not going to be productive. I'm just going to turn on my favorite movie and uh, sit with my kids or my spouse and uh, enjoy my favorite movie. Um, so don't be shy about. Um, just saying that I'm I'm gonna let myself check out today. I think we all kind of need that uh, that break and need to be able to give ourselves the grace to do that. So um, with that, I'd be happy to take any questions that you might have. Okay, and if you want to, go ahead, Joyce. I was gonna say we've got two questions that have already come in. Please type them into the box. Both questions, I think, are for Christy. They're about your survey. Where can we find the list of questions you ask businesses in your community, and what platform system was used for the survey? Yes, um, the link to our, it's through Google Forms, first of all. So we use Google Drive for most all data management um, and file management for us. So it's a Google Form. Um, and you can access the questions, the form itself through, it's a link live on our Facebook page. It's on our website, but if you go to the Mary to Main Street Facebook page, like it, of course. Um, but you can find the link right there and you can go through the variety of questions that I um, have pulled. Uh, to be fully transparent, I swiped a number of these from, I think it was Paducah, the city of, there's another, I just kind of looked it up what other communities are doing. And so I, it's a, it's a conglomeration of other folks surveys um, that I put together that I thought, thought fit well for our downtown. Um, so definitely go on to that link or my email is info at marriottamainstreet.org. Um, say again, info at marriottamainstreet.org. You're welcome to reach out to me and I can send it to you directly. Okay, others, if you want to type in questions, I'll just make a comment. I noticed, I think Adrian's on uh, the call. I, I noticed on Main Street Wadsworth, the Facebook page, just asking people where they're eating out, that there was such a big variety and a sort of a love fest of all of the restaurants in Wadsworth. Get people chatting about it, and it makes the other people feel like they're missing out. We have another question or two that have come in. Borrowing from the other communities is the highest form of compliment. The next one is uh, from Jenny. Thank you. Much better from the, <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed the webinar. Any other questions? Joyce, if I could just say something, I, I think that it's very important that um, to go to a point that that Christy made earlier and that Joe also said about communication. Um, if you are going to be canceling or postponing an event, make sure your headline sponsors uh, and obviously your volunteers are not reading about it on Facebook or on your website. Um, communicate, communicate, whether it's uh, just an email that says, um, you know, things are changing, here's why, we know that you understand. Um, just so that, that nobody is surprised when they read about these things in social media um, because uh, it is rampant out there. So make sure that as you make decisions for your uh, community, for your organization, that you're communicating that to as many people uh, behind the scenes before they read it in public. I guess if I could add a note of inspiration, I guess, as well, something I mentioned in our uh, call yesterday with the Ohio Main Street directors is 
even the most trained and knowledgeable crisis communicators, these are not the crises that they're planning for, right? So they're planning for somebody said something terrible to the press and now they need to figure it out. Or there was a scandal with the director and now they need to figure it out. I mean, these, the time that we're in right now is, you know, communities are shutting down. I mean, this is like a global, national, statewide, community-wide emergency. And so I know that there's likely, like Lorna had mentioned, there's a tremendous amount of pressure on our community's leaders and Main Street directors are leaders in our communities to solve the problem and to fix it and to give the answers. And it's hard for people to understand because that just doesn't exist right now. And so just acknowledging, again, underscoring that need for grace and that we're all just doing, making the best choices that we can with the information that we have at any one moment. And if I could uh, pull from Frozen 2, my fellow homeschooling, <laughs> working from home parents out there in solidarity, uh, all we can do is that next right thing, right? And just taking it that one step at a time, that 30 days at a time, um, and giving ourselves that permission that Joe had mentioned to just have grace because there's a lot of demand right now. I know my business owners have been asking me, should I close my doors? I can't make that decision for you. I'm sorry. Like, I can't tell you what's right and what's wrong. I can tell you how to look at your financials. I can tell you what revenue streams are. I can tell you about marketing and promotion, but that is not an answer I can give you, right? Um, and that's okay. So just to underscore that a little bit. We have another question Thanks. about what date is everyone hanging their event, hinging their events on? How far out are you starting to try to plan your events now? Um, I can say, I think we're probably looking at um, at the very earliest, June 1st. We had a mid-May event that we have um, postponed for the time being. So we're kind of shooting for that first part of June, um, but it's, it's a crapshoot. Same here. We're pretty much done April and May, and we'll try and pick it up in June, but we really just don't know. Another asked about the copy of the presentation. The recording of the webinar will automatically be sent to everybody about an hour after it completes. If you want a copy of the actual PowerPoint, just send me an email, info at heritageohio.org, and we'll get the, the PDF of the PowerPoint sent to you. Uh, Tawana also wrote the, about uh, the chamber. There's a chamber survey. Tawana, is that an Ohio chamber survey or is that U.S. Chamber of Commerce survey? I have another question. They have canceled the Derby, so I think June is our best bet. Uh, Tawana said the Ohio Chamber of Commerce has a survey out. Uh, we have the link to that if people are interested in that. And I'm sure you can just uh, Google Ohio Chamber of Commerce uh, Small Business Survey. Other questions? If there are no other questions, I'd just uh, I'd like to thank everyone who tuned in. Uh, once again, you can find contact information on heritageohio.org for all of our staff um, and links to all of our communities there as well. So please feel free to reach out to us individually if you need specific assistance, if you'd like to set a phone call. Um, we're here for you. Uh, Devin's typing out the Chamber of Commerce survey for uh, attendees. And we'll try to continue to post people when we hear from the Small Business Administration and uh, Ohio's Unemployment Office about uh, the new programs that they have. We'll be sending out an e-blast. Thank you, everyone, for attending.